Good morning, dear Stitchers. It is Judy with JBW Designs, and I am here with Floss Tube video number 39. Uh, the date today is June 24th, and um, I picked some flowers from our garden for you today. I was so excited when I went out in the backyard because the some of the hydrangeas are, have started to open up, so that made a pretty bouquet. As you can tell, I love gardening. Um, I'm a little concerned about my shirt today because it is so bright and colorful. I'm worried that it's going to be quite distracting. So I'll know when I finish this video <laughs> what your thoughts are. Um, I have so much to talk to you about today, I, and I want to thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for making such wonderful comments, writing letters. Um, it is so appreciative. And I am so appreciative of that. And I think it really connects us. When I hear from you, then I know that something that I'm doing, um, you know, is something that is appealing to you. And so that means a lot. And this week I have a number of letters uh, to read to you and tell you about. And also I'm going to encourage you to subscribe. For some reason, I'm stuck on my subscribers, and I'm not sure why. Maybe I just have to accept the fact that this is what it is. But I have to say I'm so grateful, so, so grateful for all of you who take the time to watch. So what do I have today? I have, I'm surrounded, as usual, by piles of things. So I want to show you the ornament booklet that's going to be going to the printer today. And I have seaside, I have, my theme today is going to be a seaside series. So I'm going to show you lots of models because that seemed to fall into a summer theme. I have some antiques again to show you and talk to you just a little bit about the research I've been doing. I have, um, I want to show you some sources that I used for a new design that I'm working on. And as I said, I have letters, so lots of topics. So grab some stitching and hopefully a comfortable chair and something cool to drink. It's going to be very hot here in Michigan today. So the first letter that I want to tell you about is one that really touched my heart. And I actually am going to read it to you. I hope you don't mind that. And then um, because it's something that I want to act on and I'm hoping that a few of the of you who watch my videos will also be inclined to help this lady. So she wrote, Dear Judy, I fell and broke my hip and I cannot live anywhere without help. And then she gave me the address, which I'll give to you later, of the nursing and rehab center that she's in, which is in Aden, North Carolina. It looks like I will be here for a while. My concern is my niece cleaned out my apartment and threw or sold what was in there, in, including patterns, kits, floss, fabric. My question, do you ever donate for the cause? Some of this will be for seniors that like to craft, sew, a family member has donated a small size sewing machine. I would, happy, I would be happy to pay for some things, but when your residence is a nursing home, you have very little money. I appreciate anything you can help with. Outdated, overstocked, whatever. So um, I kind of saved her letter. I received it last week. And I thought that I'm going to gather patterns, fabric, floss, some scissors, etc., and send them to her. And hope, I just can't imagine being in a nursing home and not having your resources and still loving to stitch. So I'm going to, you know my high-tech methods here, I'm going to give you her name and address if you're interested. Her name is Jessie Charles. She is in the Aiden Nursing and Rehab, 128 Show Hill Road. I want to double check that address here. That's all I have. Aiden, North Carolina. 28513. So if it's something that kind of um, strikes your heart as it did mine, I'm hoping that a few of us will donate to Jessie and um, give her a little joy in her life. Um, the other, one of the other letters I got was um, from Lisa, and I thought this was so sweet. A couple weeks ago, I talked about a trunk show that I had in Lancaster, Pennsylvania at Stitches Unlimited. And uh, Lisa went to the shop and I was so tickled because she actually photographed 
what the trunk show looked like. And I thought that was so sweet of her because thank you, Lisa. I hadn't been able, of course, to see what it looked like in the past. I just thought of something. I will put um, Jesse's address in the in my comment box below, not comment box, but information box below in case you didn't get that. And then I got another wonderful note from Davey, who was a winner in the last uh, contest. And I had sent her a pattern that she had requested. And she was so sweet. She just loved how I packaged it because I add, I package them in uh, special tissue paper and put little stickers on them and include my business card. So it's kind of a fun way to give you a gift if you place an order. She was stitching this design for her oldest and dearest friends of 50 years. And then she stitched another one of my designs called Blessings for another friend who is celebrating being five years cancer free. So that was just such a sweet note. Uh, let's see, are there any other notes here? I think that's it for my letters. Ah, one other thing. Um, I want you to check out, if you haven't before, Lori with Thread Milk Designs. And she was at market in Nashville a couple months ago. And I have watched her videos before. They're just fascinating. And she had bought quite a few of my things and I'd given her things. And she features so many of them in her last video. So thank you, Laurie. That was so appreciative. I'm so appreciative. I'm having trouble with that phrase, aren't I? Um, so what did I want to show you next? Well, I want to show you, it's really the rough draft of the next ornament collection booklet that's coming out. So I'll try to hold it up here. This is, it doesn't have a glare to it. It's just a little awkward. So there are 20 ornaments in this booklet. And of course the booklet itself, I can show you, this is um, version four. And you've seen these before, but maybe if you're new to my channel, you don't know about them. So I have done three other spiral bound books and this fourth one will be the same. And I feature 20 ornaments that have um, either I've newly designed or I've taken out of booklets that were published quite a while ago. Sometimes the booklets are even out of print. So this is um, Christmas ornament booklet number one. And here is number two. And the ornaments are small, so they're very quick and easy to stitch. And this is book number three. So I was really tickled that I was able to gather uh, 20 more. I didn't think I'd be able to. And then I'll show you briefly here. So you can see that there are charts and colored codes. And then on the very back of the booklet, let me take this apart. Excuse me for my rattling papers here. So the very back of the booklet actually shows all of the 20 ornaments in the new booklet on a little tiny Christmas tree. Now I've shown you some of the ornaments before. Actually, they're all at my um, assistant's house because she does the photography for me. But um, I will show you them probably in the next series. The, the models that I have are stitched over one on a 28 count. But I give directions in for each chart for how to stitch it both over one, and I give you the finished size, and over two. And the fabric is your choice. I mean, some people are comfortable with 25 counts or 28. Um, some people do not like stitching on one at all, and I understand that that can be difficult. The only way I'm able to do it is to with glasses and my magnifying lamp. And I, I stretch my fabric onto uh, Q snaps so it's nice and tight and if I use all that equipment then I'm able to <clears throat> excuse me stitch over one and you probably are wondering this I'm going to just show you quickly these are some of the books that those ornaments came from so Christmas Village 1 was the night 3 Vintage Ornaments which is out of print Village 3 Red Stocking very Merry Christmas, which is out of print, a winter collection. Oops, there's a duplicate there. Let me set these down. 
Uh, Mary Miniatures too. I redid this one. That's out of print. Two copies of that. One of Christmas Tree Collection 9. Baby's First Christmas. Petite French Stockings, which is out of print. Let's see. Gingerbread Cookies. Christmas Village. See, I have duplicates here. Christmas Tree 10. Sweet Christmas Bags. Twas the Night 2. Red Stocking. See, that's a duplicate. So some of these are duplicates. So you can see that, um, and a lot of these designs, and there are new ones in this booklet, um, actually um, <clears throat> are not available any longer. So um, I'm hoping that you'll be interested in that. I should be start stitching, I'm sorry, I should start shipping to shops probably after the 4th. I'm guessing it will take a week for the printer to, to get them all printed and assembled, etc. So I'll be shipping those to my shops. And um, I'm hoping that you'll contact your favorite shop and let them know you'd like one. So now I want, oh, I know. Nope, I'm going to backtrack here. As I said, I have piles everywhere. So every year, you know, <laughs> our designing schedule is really goofy because I start working on Christmas designs in well, it was March of this year. So the last couple years, and it's not every year, I designed something that is um, red and white. And so I've done a series. There's Joy Noel. I'll show you the model for one. Oh, Christmas Tree is another one in that series. Um, let's see what else here. Tidings of Joy, I think was the very first one. What year was that? 2015. And these can be stitched over one or over two, of course. Uh, last year, I did something that was red and white, and I called it Dashing Through the Snow. And I worked it on a polka dot fabric. And let's see, I think I also, yes, I also worked it on white, with white on red fabric. So this year, I decided I would continue that series a little bit. And I finished charting it and stitching one model last this last week. I'm going to show you a really quick kind of a backwards look at it. So I don't have a name for it yet. I, I can describe it to you. It's reindeer that are kind of hopping. <laughs> reindeer don't hop. They leap. Reindeer that are leaping over snow with evergreen trees and an alphabet and some really cool kind of swirly borders at the bottom. So I have two things to talk to you about. One is, I can't think of a name for this, so if you have any clever ideas, please write and let me know. And the other is, I'm and I've always stitched my own models, so this is a new thing for me to try. I am looking for someone who might be interested in stitching this model on red over one because I'm running out of time. So if that's something that appeals to you, I would pay you a course for it. Please let me know. So the next topic on the list, I'll put that aside. Oh, no, I've got one other thing here. So one of the things that I think might be interesting for you to see is that before I start a design, I spend a lot of time going, I have several hundred books that are related to antique samplers. I spend a lot of time going through the books, trying to find motifs <clears throat> that I might adapt for my own designs. And it's really quite, Fascinating. I love that research. So this is a book that, oh, let's see, I don't even know. It's fairly old, I think. I was going to see if I could find a copyright. 1987. It is fairly old. So it's French. You can see it's called, I will not pronounce it. My French is terrible. But one of the designs that I found in here that was in an antique French sampler was this deer right here. And I really liked the look of that. So I charted that was one of the deer that's in the new design. And then I also found deer in several other sources, although I ended up not using this. I never, there were deer in this booklet, but I never found one that I loved. But this is another book that I'm sure you've seen from other floss tubers. It's called The Ultimate Sampler Motif Source Book. 
and it's by Brenda Keys, and it's outstanding. So that could have been another source. And then another book that I have <clears throat> that I don't think I, oh, I don't think I took one out of here, but this was another one that I've used in the past, and it's called Animals from Early Samplers. And this is Marcia Van Valen, and I believe she owns, let me think, uh, let me think, the Scarlet. Uh, let's see if I can find a, a source here. The Scarlet Letter, that's what I was trying to think of. And you know that she does many sampler reproductions. But this is a fascinating one because she finds motifs from old antique samplers and charts them. So those are three of the sources that I use for designing. And then also, when I'm traveling, um, I often photograph pieces that I see along the way. And I did not write on the back where I was, um, but this was one design that I found on floor tiles that I thought had a lot of possibilities to it. I liked all of the motifs. I did not reproduce that, but it was just a resource. This was actually in an antique cupboard, and you can see the stag, which would have been a, a great also kind of design that I could chart. And this is the third source. This was actually from Antique uh, Magazine, and it was a window railing. And I really liked the design, if you can see that, that was at the top of this. I like that stag up there. So those are some of the sources I use when I'm designing. I'm going to grab, excuse me for one second, quick drink of water. <clears throat> All right, excuse me. So the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about, let's see how I'm doing with my piles here, is the antique samplers that I'm working on. And these were two that I purchased in the last few months. I've actually charted both of them. I don't think they're going to come out for a while. I need to, I want to stitch another model of each of them. And I kind of have my next set of designs that will be released at the end of August. So I'm thinking these might be early next year, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about what I had found as far as uh, genealogy information. So this was one that I think I might have shown you I did in the last video. It was worked by, uh, wrought by Melinda Farrell, age 12. I did find out from the back of the frame that she was from Troy, New York. So when I went on to Ancestry.com to look up Melinda Farrell, I did find her. Uh, her birth year was 1801, and I'm guessing this is like 18, well, she was 12. She, it would have been 1813. She did grow up in Troy, New York. But when she's listed here, this is the confusing part. She's listed, and, and this was a census, as Melinda Farrell, and that was her married name. But it is Troy, New York, which I believe is where that came from. But I'm having trouble trying to figure out um, where is Melinda Farrell, my little 12-year-old girl, because some things are lining up and some things are, are not. And this often happens when you're trying to research uh, the antique samplers, especially if it doesn't give a location and um, a date that it was stitched, which is true of that one. And then this is the second one that I find quite fascinating. This is uh, um, the girl who stitched it was born in 1797, and her name was Jane Forbes. And I love the colors of her piece. And I found some information about Jane. It does give her name as Jane Forbes, birth year 1787, Massachusetts, which kind of goes with what I believe because when I bought it from the dealer, they said it was an American sampler. Now, in this census, she is 73 years old, and she is a household member of another family. And so, again, this is the information I have is not all lining up with the date and the name on the sampler, 
Um, so I'm trying to kind of, so if you have any suggestions for me, I'm trying to figure out how can I tie these two together, and it's possible that I will not be able to do that. So um, we'll see. We'll just keep working on it, right? So the next thing I want to cover with you is my um, seaside models. So I think many of you know, because I've been posting them on Instagram. Let me grab all of these. Excuse me, as I disappear here. All right. So I have seven books in the Seaside series. And what I wanted to do is show you not only the designs, because it just seems appropriate for summer, but also to show you what the books look like and what the finished models look like and give you some ideas for finishing because I think that always is helpful. So this first book I'm going to show you is Seaside 6. And you can see that there's a mermaid and a starfish in this one. And let's see, this, the mermaid was stitched on a 32 count Lugana called Caribbean. And you can see it's just a beautiful aqua color. And then the starfish was stitched on a, um, a 32 count Lugana, and it was a very pale pink, and it was called Splash. And it actually has little white dots on it. I love that fabric. Um, and I believe that's a Swigert fabric. So let me show you a little bit about the finishing. So if you were trying to duplicate this finish, I would uh, follow the path that we talked about in my last video, which was covering the board with a little bit of batting. So I use comic board, then I cut a layer of batting. First, I would make a template for this, so let me back up. Once you finish stitching your design, you can actually lay this on your printer and then that will give you a paper copy so that you can make a pencil sketch, pencil drawing to make a template. So if you wanted the template to look like this, I would cut that out of paper, then I'd cut out your cardboard, then I would layer this layer over one of your pieces of board, and then you can see that this is actually if you can see if I hold it like that, it's actually two more boards that it's been mounted on. So then you would choose a backing fabric. And again, you would make your template a little bit larger than the original one. And you would sew or glue those two pieces together. And then you would mount this on top of it. Now this is finished with ruched ribbon. And there are several floss tubers who have done excellent videos on how to do ruched ribbon. One is Kathy Haberman with Hands-On Design and the other is Misty with Luminous Fiber Arts. And it's really a unique way of finishing because the ribbon is twisted and then secured with a pin just under the layer of the design. So I thought you'd love seeing that finish. And then this one, the little starfish, was finished in the same manner. So you can see the ruched ribbon. If I get it up close here, you might be able to see the pins along the side. So that was Seaside Series 6. And uh, let's see what fibers did I use. Let me look that up. So I used Strawberry um, Parfait for the pink, which is a classic Colorworks um, fiber. And I used DMC 597 for, oh, actually, I used white on this one. I think I stitched these again over one, and I'm not finding, not finding the models. This one is not stitched with turquoise. This is actually stitched with white, so I misled you there. So another design in that series is called, uh, this was the, actually the very first one in that series. So Seaside series doesn't have a number, I didn't know I was going to keep going, consisted of angelfish, flamingo, and seahorse. And again, I stitched these over two, and I've also stitched them over one. 
So I have several of those models here that I can share with you. So let's see, let's look at the book and check on the fabrics, etc. So the flamingo was stitched on a 32 count French stripe, which is made by uh, Fabric Flare. And the, show you each one. Uh, let's see, these were over one, so this was just stitched on a 28 count linen. And we'll talk about the finishing of that. That was the seahorse. And then here's the angelfish, also stitched over one. So let's look first at the flamingo and study that finishing. Because it was the same kind of thing that I talked to you about before. If you see um, Velcro on the back of these, it's just because they're used for display. So you, again, you're going to mount your front piece with a little bit of batting or felt. You're going to cover your back piece. And then in this case, this was professionally finished. My finisher used the pom-pom trim to put on the edges. And I just love how that, that turned out. It makes a great easy trim. And then for the other two pillows, she made them into, or the other two designs, she made them into small pillows. And you, you can see here she used a very... Um, I want to say coarse rickrack, but I love the way it looks. It almost looks like sand. And so she just added that as trim along here, a little bow, and then a charm. So that was just a tiny stuffed pillow. And then the angel fish was finished in the same way. You can see the darling little fish charm there. You see the back of the pillow. I love the finishing on that. Um, one of the books, I don't have the models with me. I think they're downstairs. I forgot to pull them. So the last book in this series was Seaside Series 7, and it was a beach umbrella in a sailboat. And I actually have a list of designs that I've gotten from you, my viewers, of ideas to do for Seaside 8, but that won't come out until next year. So I have a couple more, oh, quite a few more, actually. I hope this isn't too much for you. So I just love the finishing on these. That's why I wanted to share them with you today. So Seaside Series 6, I'm going quite out of order here, consisted of the lobster and the sea turtle. And my models that I have to show you were actually mounted in a very unique way. So first they were mounted just on a disc by themselves. But then the finisher made a beach ball out of wool and hand stitched, you can see the embroider, embroidery stitches along here, the edges of each side of the beach ball. I just think that is fabulous. And the colors she used were just perfect. And then with the lobster, she made a little uh, life preserver. And this is what the lobster looks like. But I could see you reproducing this in an easier fashion, um, perhaps with felt. It could be mounted on a round circle, and you could use the felt with the adhesive backing, and you could still make this kind of thing if you weren't interested in doing all the hand sewing. This is what the back of that one looks like. So that was Seaside Series 6, no, 4. All right, now the next one I have to show you. It's very hard to say that quickly, and I'm, <laughs> I'm probably sounding goofy about it. Anyhow, Seaside Series 5. And this was the conch shell and the seagull. So once again, my finisher did the most unbelievable finish of this piece. So it is mounted on a shell made out of wool and hand stitched with three darling little uh, pearls down at the bottom here. Isn't that just gorgeous? But I th I've seen a couple of uh, floss tubers finish these and just use them kind of as an ornament, which I think would be darling too. So let me show you the, one of the other ones in this series. And this is the seagull, and that has been mounted as a pail, a sand pail. And you can see the finishing is just amazing. 
And then I have four more little seaside pieces to show you. And these are, you're going to look at them and say, hmm, that's kind of unusual. Why do they look like that? So the next four that I'm going to show you are all mounted on little dowel rods. And the reason for that is that actually they were, and they come from two different books. I'll show you them each individually. But they were put in a darling little sand pail. And you could fill it with sand to give it weight, or you could just fill it with, you know, um, scrap paper. And then what I did when I took it to market is I would put a layer of shells around the perimeter of this sand pail with the little poles sticking into it. So let me show you which books these come from. So this is from the number three Seaside series, and that is The Crab and the Dolphin. And so, let's see, let me grab the right ones here. So here's the little crab. And this was mounted on a board with quite a bit of batting with a twisted cording edge. And then that was mounted just on a piece of wool that you could cut with like pinking shears. Added a little bow to the corner there. The dolphin looks like this. Again, the cording is used here and it's mounted on a piece of wool for the backing. And a little bow was added. I did not tell you the colors of the fabric on those, but if you're interested, you can always order them uh, from one of your favorite shops. So the last two that go in that pale series, oh, I got them, no, nope, got them right, sorry, are the seashell and the pelican. Let me show those to you. So the seashell looks like this finished in the same manner with the backing. And the pelican, I love the fabric on this one. Let's see, what, what did I use? Uh, fabric, oh, this is sea foam from uh, Stephanie's uh, hand-dyed fabrics. She has gorgeous fabrics. And I believe the other one was worked on a pale pink polka dot fabric that was um, from Yarn Tree. So though, that's the end of my, hopefully, inspiration for some finishing and some summer stitching. And as I've mentioned before, um, I do have a website. Um, a lot of my booklets, not the newer ones, but older ones, because I'm on book number 417 right now. So we don't, I don't try to compete with the shops. I put my older designs up on the website and you can go and order them there directly from me. But I'm going to tell you about two shops today that I'd love to have you visit or um, call if you are in need of placing some orders. So I, I had a shop call a week or so ago and asked me if I would do um, an exclusive design for her. Let me find where did I put it on my desk here. Ah, there it is. So I I wasn't sure because I'm so busy designing other things. But then I remembered that I had a design that I had done actually before COVID for a shop in Florida for another promotion, and they weren't able to use it. So they returned the model to me, and I decided I would send it to Terry. And Terry is with a shop called Cross Stitch Station in Waynesboro, Virginia. And I will list all the shop information when I type up my um, information about the video after I finish it. So this is the design that I sent to Terry, and it's an exclusive design for her shop only. And I think that she's either going to kit it or just offer it as a chart. So I'm going to encourage you here. Let me show you that one more time. It's a nice summary design, isn't it? So the, the shop is in Waynesboro, Virginia. And as usual, my high-tech system here, it's on 520D West Broad Street. And I will put that information below. And then the other shop that I wanted to mention today is Accents Incorporated. 
and the reason is that I'm going to have a trunk show there in the month of July. And uh, it's owned by Gail and Angela. They've owned the shop for a long time. I have never visited the shop, but I have a feeling it's a fabulous store. So as I say, I'll type that information below for you. So I want to give you just a little bit more information. Um, a life update. We gathered in two different occasions for Father's Day last weekend, and that was a lot of fun. Um, this weekend, there's an, uh, our monthly antique show is taking place on Sunday, so that's where I'll be Sunday morning, hoping to find more treasures. I have prize winners for this week. I always go back and read all the comments, and then I use a random number generator to choose three people, and you can uh, select any of the booklets that I shared with you today as your prize. And last time, I'm so happy to tell you, I heard from everyone, so we're all caught up on prize winners. So our new prize winners are Diane Lynam, L-Y-N-U-M, Jim Evans, and Susan Saunders. So if you will email me, judy at jbwdesigns.com, and with your mailing address, I'd be happy to send out your prize in the next couple weeks. So let's see, what else do I have to share with you? How to contact me best way is email. And I told you about the website. I also have a Friends of JPW Design Facebook page. And about every two weeks, we do a contest on there. And I give a prize um, from the contest. Now, I like to end my video with an inspirational quote. And some weeks I find ones that are great. This one I thought actually, it, it has a, a good message for it, to it. So it's not what you have in your pocket that makes you thankful, but what you have in your heart. And I liked that. I thought that had a lot of meaning to it. So what am I going to do for the next video? It probably, let's see, it'll probably be two weeks from now. I'm not even sure what that date will be. Sometime in July after the 4th. And I think I'm going to start talking about Christmas ornaments. And, um, Whoops, sorry, I had a little blip on my computer there. Um, I'm going to start talking about my stocking series, and I'm going to talk to you about how to finish them. So please ask questions. I love it when you ask questions so that I can help you with things that are puzzling to you or if my directions weren't quite great, <laughs> as great as they should be. So um, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in a couple of weeks, and happy 4th of July to you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.